What's going on everybody? Are you struggling from blurry engravings or even engravings that look like they're doubled? Well, in this video, we're going to show you how to fix it. So hang on tight and let's get into it. So here are a couple examples of what I'm talking about. So a lot of times the symptoms or what you see is that your engraving looks blurry or that the edges of the engraving, especially on wood, are sloped. And in sometimes it can be even bad to the point where you literally see two images. And that's happening because with these lasers, most of the time you have bi-directional scanning on. So it's burning an image as it goes to the right, and it's burning an image as it goes to the left. And if those two, the timing between those two, don't line up perfectly, then it's showing both of them. Ideally, you want those to line up so that way it's one crisp image. So that's what we're going to talk about and how you make those adjustments in Lightburn so that way it lines those up and the timing of the tube firing, the timing of the head moving, all is perfect so that it gives you a nice crisp engraving. All right, so our first stop is going to be at the Lightburn documentation. Let's talk about what it is that we actually need to do and what scanning offsets even means. So take a look here. This is the Lightburn documentation and talking specifically about scanning offsets. It basically explains that modern lasers move fast and the faster you move, the harder it is for this to keep up. And so you have to make these adjustments so that way the laser knows what it should be doing to get the results you're looking for. Um, so here, this is what it looks like if you're just doing a box and you're testing what offsets you need and so you can see how these tails don't line up you got a nice solid box looking here and on the left hand side we've got this and the right hand side we've got this so this is what we're going to do in our testing we are going to make a box and we are going to run this test and we're going to use the line interval space it out enough so we can actually see what is happening and that's what's going on here in the documentation it talks about um, putting a spacing of 0.5 millimeters. Sometimes I even do more. I'll do like one millimeter in between so I can really see those lines separated and we're going to need to measure those tails. So these tails here, we're going to measure them in our test and then we are going to put the half measurement into our settings in Lightburn to compensate for this. You need to do this at multiple speeds so that way it can basically learn and bridge all the gaps of all the speeds. So doing it at a lower speed, kind of a medium speed and a higher speed should get you pretty close. And you may want to add some others as you do some testing, but that's where we're going to start. So here you can actually see this is the window where the scanning offsets live and it's this box right here. So we're going to do our tests and then we're going to add values into here and you have to turn this on to then make all those values active on all your projects. And you'll see here that in the scanning offset adjustment, there are three different items or three different variables that we're going to put in here. Um, so you've got the speed. So that's going to be the speed that your machine is running when you do the test, the line shift, and that is going to be what gets those lines stacked on top of each other. And so, you know, left or right, it's going to be the same measurement. It's going to push them together. It can be negative. It can be positive, just depending on what's going on. And then the initial offset. So initial offset is going to make a full shift of everything. So it's saying that the laser is running and it doesn't even start firing until after you expect it to. So it shifted everything. So that initial offset, we have to put in a measurement to get that back. And you can test that by running the box that we're doing and then doing a score line around the outside of it to test that and then measure what that needs to be. So now we're here in Lightburn and let me show you just how to get things set up. Then I'll run out to the laser, we'll run those tests and come back in here and show you how to measure and how to put those values in. And then we'll test again and make sure that the values were correct. So here in Lightburn, just grab your, your rectangle or square tool, whatever you want to call it, stretch a square out. And then I'm going to say, I want this to be 100 millimeters wide and 100 millimeters tall. So we've got that here. We're going to need this to be a fill. So let's go ahead and we'll open up the settings window. 
and we'll start off with saying 100. The power doesn't have to be very high, we just need it enough to it so it'll show a line as it goes back and forth. Um, so we can say, uh, let's go 30. Um, I'm doing it on a 150 watt laser. Um, so you can leave that there and then we need to make sure that this mode is fill. So the other thing that we talked about is making sure that this value here, your line interval, is high enough that it's spreading those lines out so you can see it. So I'm going to put in one millimeter. You can put in less. Um, the light burn documentation recommended 0.5 millimeters. Um, I like a little bit more. So we'll do 0.1 millimeters. It's 130. And then in the preview, this is what it looks like. So all engravings are just a series of lines. This one, you can see it more because it is already spaced out. Um, but as you zoom in on this, you can see like the line spacing and this is how it looks. So this is how you set it up and then you'll run this test, look at it, and you can run several more. If you wanted to, you can also go and just duplicate this down. And make a series of boxes, change the, uh, the layer on the different ones. So we'll say this one's a blue, this one is red, and then this one is, is green and we'll just change all the settings here so we said okay we wanted let's do let's go up a little bit more let's do 300 and we'll keep that at 30 fill red now let's do 400 30 30 fill Oh, we forgot to change. I need one here. Same thing here. We want one. And then our green. Most machines are hopping, stopping or topping out somewhere at like 500, 600 millimeters a second. So let's go 600. And 30, 30 and change this to one. So that is one thing to be aware of is what does your laser top out at? If you have a laser that has servo motors, um, like the one that I'm going to be doing the tests on, you may need to go up to a thousand. You may need to go up to 1200, just depending on what your machine is actually capable of. Figure that out from your manufacturer. So that way you're, you're testing and, and covering all the speeds that you need to. But this is how you would set it up. You could run all of these boxes and then do some measurements and make sure that everything looks right. So let's run out to the laser. Let's run these tests, look at them, put in our values. All right, so for these tests, you literally can use whatever material you want. Um, granted, keep in mind, you want it to be something that has some decent contrast when you run these lines across it. So you can see what's going on. Um, I am going to use this scrap little piece of whiteboard uh, because the line should engrave pretty dark so that I can see it on the white surface. So I'm going to run those boxes and then I'll mark them, tell you what's going on, we'll measure, go from there. Okay, so before we get too much farther, I just want to show you kind of what happened. So here is 100 and then speeds going up from there. And you can see it gradually getting worse. And that is because of the speed. It takes a lot for the laser to get started and to stop. And so it is just throwing these all off. So now we're gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna clean this a little bit so it's easier to see. Um, we will measure and put our settings into light burn. Okay, so I went and I labeled each one of these 100, 300, 400, 600. And if you don't have a pair, I would really recommend getting a pair of calipers so that way you can do this. Because what you want to do is you want to measure how long that tail is. So from the left point to the right point, that is just below. So that way you can say how far off these two lines are. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to measure again over here. We're going to measure this one, and then we're going to measure this one, and this one. And these are going to give us our measurements that we then need to divide in half and then put into light burn so we can put them into practice.
Okay, so did my measurements, and here we are. So at the 100, you've got 1.46 millimeters, and then so on. You can see all those values. And then I divided them by two, what I'm doing here, and that's what this lower measurement is. So this is half of that, half of that, half of that. This second, so the half measurement is what's going to go in light burn. So you can make that offset. So I'm going to go ahead, let's go ahead and enter these into light burn. So in order to find this box, one thing that I, I hadn't mentioned yet is actually this wrench and screwdriver up here. Click that, and here it is. This is where all of that stuff lives. So all you do is you click add, and then you put in your speed and the line shift. That's what this measurement is that we just got. Don't do anything with the initial offset yet. We can test that in just a minute. But go ahead and we'll put all these in. Okay, so this is how it looks. 100, 300, 400, 600. These are the values and we left this initial offset alone. And so that's the same stuff that I had here. So now with all that here in Lightburn, we're gonna run the same test again, see what it looks like. All right, so here you go. This is now what it looks like after doing those tests and everything is lining up really nice. So it did what we expected it to, and the measurements we got were great. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna go and I'm going to run a box around it so we can talk about that initial offset. All right, so now with the box around it, you can see that everything, at least for me, is lining up pretty nice and crisp right along with those lines. So I'm not feeling like I'm gonna change any of those offsets. Everything's looking pretty good. So we'll leave that alone. And that's it, we're done. We, we were able to put in the scanning offsets, get those engraving lines basically to line up even on each side. So that way your engravings are now gonna be nice and crisp. So that's how you go about doing your scanning offsets. Um, honestly, this process, it seems like it might be complicated, but it is really straightforward if you follow the steps just run those boxes. Um, as, as a little side note, I did make those boxes much smaller. Um, originally when I showed the design, it was at 100 millimeters wide. You don't need that big. Uh, I believe I dropped it down to 50, so a bit half that. You could probably even do smaller as long as you can see what the ends of those boxes are doing. So you can make your measurements, put in your values. If this video is helpful and other things like this, especially with Lightburn is interesting to you, please check out my course. I'll have links for that in the description and like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.